Antonia, I am so excited to get a chance to have this conversation with you. And so first thing I want to say off the bat is thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and some of your time in this conversation today. I thank you, but not, I really can wait and I'm so excited to, to hear from you again. <laughs> Well, thank you. Uh, okay, I'm going to start by asking you uh, if you can describe to us a little bit about the pain that you were going through that led you to uh, start doing this work. Okay, so I reached out to you, Bern, like one year ago. Uh, yes, maybe August last year. And I was in a very wrecked, bad place because... So I'm Italian originally and I moved to, to London two years ago, so I started a new life from scratch, I was on my own, independent, doing my job, dating, going out with, with guys and I was dating a guy who I was very fond of uh, and he seemed to. Um, so it was like three months in and then something happened. Um, I if I'm pregnant and this kind of um, put everything into discussion not that the relationship was serious to be honest but we were having fun we were enjoying ourselves and then unfortunately I had a miscarriage but this um, opened like a box for me and for him and I get I got more clingy maybe hormones maybe just it's normal but then he started pulling away and I started to be clingy and it was a very passionate relationship but I knew in my heart that this wasn't going anywhere so I was attaching to something that I couldn't grab and that I knew it wasn't serving me but I was in a very sad place I was lonely and alone in London and I didn't feel like I could reach out to my mom, for example, because I didn't want to, her to, to feel, to worry about me. So I was only, I didn't know who to uh, to contact and and talk from, from a vulnerable place. And I was looking in, in YouTube and I, I came across you, obviously, um, I came across also other other coaches, other relationship coaches, but I don't know, I felt you have this such beautiful face and energy that you convey <laughs> and I felt very close to you in, in some ways really, so I decided, to, I decided to reach out. Thank you. Well, uh, what can you say, Monia, right now in terms of if you go back in your mind as to what are some of the, not necessarily the exercises, but the realizations or the biggest breakthroughs, maybe one or two of the biggest breakthroughs that you got a chance to understand in your heart that allowed you to step out of that place and go to a new direction in your life. So first of all, this is something that you actually told me the very first uh, generic call that we had before embarking on, on the journey together. Sure. And it was a bit harsh on me, but that's the thing, it's a trait of yours, like, you slap people in the face, but it's really useful. <laughs> it's you with might love. Not say, like, wow, what's happening, what's going on, this is like, you're very blunt, but that's how you, that's how you heal, that's how you uh, get people to be, to wake up, to open their eyes, to get conscious, and... Do you remember what I said to you that, that made a difference that day? Exactly, so what you told me is that you're like on drugs. You get the high, so this guy gets you high, but then when he's not there, you get the dose, and, and you need the dose, and you need the dose, and also the pain, you feel like it's part of the relationship, and it's part of the, um, of the compromise, or the contract that you have with the other person. And actually, I didn't want to admit, I thought it was genuine, but I was on drugs, on, and what, what I think drugs also, cause is that you shake when you don't have your toes you shake you started like sure. physically feeling in pain mm -hmm. and that's what i used to go through and one of the realizations that i came across thanks to you is that fear was also taking part taking taking my body and and i was also shaking for that but i realized that you have to go to the other side of fear 
It's mm. just that limit, that step. If you go there, you won't die. It actually shifts everything. Mm. And for the better of you, obviously. <laughs> but you don't know because you're so freaking scared. It's like, oh my God, I'm going to die. True. I'm going to die. This is the end. Yeah. So, I mean, so but if you to, go past the feet. To clarify for all yeah. of you watching, and Moni is talking about a metaphorical high, not necessarily a, an actual high. That what we're talking oh. about. <laughs> Metaphorical high of connecting Sorry. with someone and experiencing intensity and getting high from that intensity as if it were a drug and and it's an addictive type of situation because uh, it feels horrible but feeling horrible sometimes feels better for your heart than feeling numb or feeling nothing. So um, so for you, uh, well, tell me tell me what were some of the not just breakthroughs in mindset or breakthroughs in understanding but actual breakthroughs oh. in that relationship you were in and further along in the new relationship that you're able to start afterwards okay so um we were talking about fear of taking step further and go past fear and so i decided to to break the relationship to to stop the relationship with that guy and uh, he came back like in the movies. No, I love you. Come back. Let's try again. Um, and you were very honest with me. You were very clear. You were like, okay, he's coming back. Uh, that that you could have expected, but please be careful because he might not last for the long run. And uh, I heard you, but. <laughs> I didn't want to to give in, so I thought, oh my God, he he did this this amazing act. Why why not give him a second chance? Dang, stupid, not ever give him a second chance. And so we tried again, and then there's something like it wouldn't take off really. And so I broke with him for good. Uh, three months later, he would still do some of the expected acts that guys. Put up with like coming back saying that they love you but then it was like the song that said he's his best wasn't good enough and it was real right yeah. he tried his best but his best was was short of what you expect and want in a man yeah and doing the work with you um helps you a lot because you realize that talk is cheap if it's not followed through and by actions mm -hmm. you, you can believe what you want but then it won't happen and another thing is really embodying feminine energy, which was something that at the beginning was like, what is feminine energy? I'm a woman, I, I have feminine energy, obviously. <laughs> I'm a woman, right? Yes. No, it's something deeper. It's feeling your body, feeling your emotions, allow yourself to go through what you feel and do this exercise that you, you suggest us to do uh, throughout the whole journey of how how to better actually embody, feel the energy, uh, self-love, self-touch. So also sexually, the haps, dancing, do what you do what you like, and slowly but surely, you get there. Hmm. So to finish replying to your answer, well, my sure. Tell me about your new relationship. <laughs> so um, I remember that we finished when we finished our journey together. Uh, you asked me how. What do you see for yourself in a year time? And I and I told you, uh, I see myself moving in with someone, living together with someone. And this comes like, this comes in quite quite handy because this is actually amazing. Um, I moved in with my actual boyfriend just this weekend. So, what I thought, what I wanted last year is happening. And what is so different is that. I don't have to do anything. It just happens naturally. It's organic. I don't have to play games or be cool. It just happened naturally. I think when you're ready, it's like when you're ready, the teachers, uh, the teacher manifests itself, and it, mm. it's like that. Well, what what would you say? Maybe what what's one or two things that you admire about the man that you're with? Ah, uh, <laughs> the first thing that I admire of him is that. Conf he is confident, but when I say confident, it's not on a superficial level. It's like 
he's truly inside, he's very solid, he's very confident about himself, about his values, about who he is and where he wants to go. In the past I've been with guys that, yeah, they look confident, they're so macho and they're strong, but this is so fake, because mm -hmm. you, like, you do like, and they fall down. Okay. They're very fragile actually, this is a mess they put up, but, and the guy I'm with, He's very confident and he's such a provider, like emotionally. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, so, he's a supporter, he believes in me and I admire him and I respect him. Mm -hmm. uh, last question I have for you is, uh, some women are watching this right now and they're saying, well, great, look at her, she's so beautiful. I, uh, I mean, uh, of course she's gonna find someone. Or maybe they're saying, uh, this sounds like a crock of shit, maybe uh, it's too good to be true or you can't turn it around in such a big way from going through multiple guys who weren't cutting it to one who actually fully stepping in. What would you say to someone who's maybe thinking about doing this work but is on the fence about investing in herself, which is not easy, or taking that leap of faith, not in me, but in her uh, mm -hmm. self, and, uh, and going forward and, and doing something that might have a different outcome for the rest of her life? Okay, first of all, one is not too good to be true because you have to deal with your own, own shit. Can I say shit? I said shit. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> so it's no not a walk in the park necessarily, right? No. Uh, Bern, Bernardo will take you by the hand, but you still have to deal with your own shit. I'm sorry, I have to say that. <laughs> and But <laughs> you're actually the best person because you also give a masculine perspective to, to us, to, to the ladies, and there's this amazing group of uh, sisters that mm. help each other, and um, I think that what really gets you there is hunger. Uh, you have to say to yourself, I cannot put up with this shit anymore, like, I don't want this for me anymore. Mm. And I understand money can be can be a barrier. As I told you, I was on my own in London. I was starting a job, so I wasn't like super confident uh, financially. But as you said, it's an investment. It's not a waste because you pay off from. But then what you get back is like tenfold. Mm -hmm. It comes back tenfold, and it's so much love, like burn. <laughs> I don't know where he, where he gets all this love from because he's, uh, yeah, I feel loved every time I speak with you and even if we don't speak I feel mm -hmm. that you love me from a distance and this is quite priceless. Well, thank you so much Ronia for, for sharing your heart, thank you so much beyond sharing your heart right now for all that you've done, for the times where you were between doing what you knew was right and what you felt in the moment that was like in, maybe better in the moment that you chose what's right long term. Thank you for being truthful in the conversations we have. Thank you for reaching out when you needed help. And uh, thank you for understanding that it's not about, this whole thing is not about being fearless because that should, I don't think exists. It's about choosing higher value or choosing courage over fear time and time and time again and then being able to transcend the pain and get to a situation where it's not that you won't encounter problems but it's a situation where the problems are higher quality and you can deal with them from a different perspective instead of going through the same shit all over again so thank you so much and yes i love you so much my dear uh thank you for for everything that you are and for the transformation that you've gone through and i have the deepest respect and admiration for for your journey and for who you are Thank you for kicking all these off, like for starting that. <laughs>